Hello there, killer awesome truckers. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. I'm just out here taking a walk. But I wanted to talk to you about something that I hadn't really talked about. Uh, I may have mentioned it here and there, but I haven't actually had a done a direct video about it. And that is about my first six months with Swift. Um, and I think now's a good time to talk about it because I'm getting a little frustrated because <laughs> uh, I'm on their casual fleet and I'm not getting uh, any loads so I don't even know why they offered it to me but anyhow so yeah one of the reasons why um, I decided to get out of OTR was because the money just wasn't there uh, it wasn't there I was constantly getting live loads, live unloads, too much waste of time, uh, situations where I should have gotten detention pay, I should have gotten layover pay, and all I got was excuses of why they weren't going to pay it, or that's assuming I even got an excuse. Uh, sometimes they didn't say anything. But let's talk about my first six months. My first six months were great as far as money was concerned and I ran hard and that was being new. I ran hard because I was getting one load after the other and so I just kept up with it. But here's the thing that you may not know. During those first six months, I was offered a guaranteed minimum of $1,000 a week. If I didn't make 1000 they would make up for that. If I made more, great. <laughs> That's awesome. So, when you consider the fact that I was getting a guaranteed thousand minimum of $1,000 a week, what do you think Swift's expectations would be. You're supposed to accept every load unless you had a really good reason not to. And that's what I was doing. I was accepting every load that was sent to me. And as a new driver, not really, you know, knowing some of these places and what I could do and what I, you know, wasn't ready to do, you know, I wound up getting in a few scuffles that I had to figure my way out of but uh, do you think for a moment that Swift wanted to get their money's worth you better believe it they're offering a thousand dollars a week yeah they're gonna want to get their money's worth and that was for the first six months and so they made sure that I got dropping hooks, that I got loads that were over 500 miles. They wanted to get their money's worth. Now, once that six months was done, things didn't change right away, but they slowly did. That's when they started giving me uh, plans of here go take this local load it's only five miles away but they don't offer any local pay they just say well you'll get an empty trailer and then we'll stack you with something good but they didn't stack me they didn't add that next load do you think I was going to trust them oh sure sure I'll go do that for you and then they give me some crappy load oh, I'm sorry this is all we had yeah, no, sorry. And then I started getting shorter miles, live loads, live unloads, sitting, waiting for the next load over and over again. And I know part of this is because of the market. Market's pretty bad. So it all kind of, it all ties together. And there have been situations 
where a planner gave me a really good load and then someone took it away. And I inquire about it and like, oh, we gave that to a team. And then it turns out that they they canceled it or they would have gotten it there late for some reason. Whereas I have plenty of hours and could have gotten it there on time. And then they wind up giving the load back to me. <laughs> now you can't tell me that there's something weird about that. But yeah, the money wasn't consistent after the six weeks. Sure, there are some weeks that I made over a thousand, but it wasn't every week. It might have been maybe once every other month. And I took the time to add it up over a course of three or four months, divide it out, come up with an average. And it was pathetic. I might as well be working at a fast food joint. Now, granted, uh, I, w I guess I was making okay money based on the hours that I was actually working. But the thing is, is that it wasn't cutting it anymore. And my weight, and my, my weight, my health wasn't getting any better. It just wasn't worth it. Why stay? <laughs> Why stay? And one of my academy friends who left and went to Crete, he experienced the same thing. And he wasn't OTR. He was undedicated. And he was making great money. And then all of a sudden, he's having to wait, wait, wait for that next load. They weren't giving him detention pay. And I said, well, you're supposed to ask. Uh, <laughs> maybe he did and he got tired. But I mentioned to him the six-month thing because he was under that same six-month guarantee. And he said, oh, you're right. <laughs> so that's something I haven't talked about in detail. It's not that I couldn't run. They just didn't give me the opportunity anymore. I just got excuses. Well, we don't really have anything. What they meant to say was, we don't have anything for you. <laughs> well, they have plenty of stuff. They just didn't have anything for me. You know what I mean? After several months, I was getting better. I was learning the places that I could park and places to stay away from. So I would have been able to run a lot better than what I did my first six months. I guess I wasn't that important. Not that I was really expecting much because, you know, <laughs> I'm not really a person at Swift or maybe any trucking company for that matter. I'm just a, a dr another driver with another number. That's fine. I mean, I guess everything happens for a reason, right? I mean, I've got a better job now. Um, it's paying me more than what I was getting with Swift. I'm home. It's only six miles, no, nah, about six, nine miles away from home. And I work early in the morning, which is what I wanted to do. I like to start early, end early. The people at my work are great. Um, I've got good relations with them. They're, they're good people and they actually do care about you because it's a smaller company. It's not a big corporation. It's a smaller company and they actually care about people. I mean, what's not to like? And I'm a bit saddened about the whole thing with Swift because I did enjoy going out on the road, um, yeah, maybe Swift didn't pay the greatest, but I like the fact that they had terminals all over the U.S. So if I needed a place to stay, it was not a, you know, I had more options available. 
and Swift as a company is not a bad company. You know, like I said, it may not pay the greatest, but it really isn't that bad of a company. But like all companies, you're going to have bad people in them. You're going to be, you're going to have people that are going to give you a song and a dance and nothing to back it up. And that's, un that's unfortunate. And, uh, I'm still, even with this casual fleet, I'm still trying to get loads. And, you know, I'm asking every week, oh, sorry, we just don't have anything. Loads are really bad. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. And there's been a comment on one of my videos saying, you're in a casual fleet. What motivation do they have to give you a load? Okay, you got a great point. What motivation do they have for giving me a load when they've got drivers that are, you know, uh, working full time or I don't know, you can't really say full time in, in, in the trucking industry. Uh, but they're, uh, you know, they're out on the road and stuff like that. So you got a good point. My point, here's, here's my counter argument. Why offer me the casual fleet if you're not going to give me anything? I probably was going to quit anyway, but they offered me the casual fleet and said, Hey, um, this, this will allow you to stay with Swift and keep your CDL active and, you know, keep your foot in the door so you don't have to reapply later and, uh, you can run as much as you want. You know, if you want to do a load here or a couple loads there, or if, if you want to go out for a week and, and come back, you know, you can do that. I'm like, great. That sounds great. Um, so why, why offer that to me if you're not going to give me the loads? I, you know, so that, that's a, that's a topic for another video. <laughs> um, it's the weekend right now when I'm filming this. And once again, I sent out a, um, a message, uh, to the, uh, manager of the uh, casual fleet saying hey um, I you know I'm interested in getting a load and I had uh, sent a message to my formal driver leader and asked him hey how are loads uh, looking oh things are picking up things are getting better great so I sent a message to the casual fleet manager nothing <laughs> I just ignored I mean honestly if you don't want me there, just say so. If you don't want me at Swift, just say so. Uh, yeah, it's just not working out. Okay, yeah, you're right. It's not working out. <laughs> it's not working out for you. It's not working out for me. I mean, just say it. Just say it. Don't beat around the bush. Just say, you, you know what? We, we, we just don't need you right now. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll move on. Well, I mean, I already have moved on. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. Um, you know, don't waste my time. I won't waste your time. Some of you are doing great out there. That's, that's awesome. Um, but then there are other, uh, others of us that, you know, we want to do well, but they just don't want to work with us. So it is what it is. Anyways, thanks for watching and hope you're enjoying the other videos that I'm putting out. Um, I said that I wanted to try to get more types of trucking content out and different types of stuff. And I hope you're enjoying it on these Tuesdays. So we'll see you on another video. Have a killer awesome day.